Now that we've created a couple of pins on our map, we want to fetch those pins and display them. So the first step to doing that is to head back to our type defs file and add a new query, which we're going to call get pins. And this is going to return to us an array of pins, an array of elements of type pin. And to ensure that each of these pin elements are non-null, we can add an exclamation point. We can require that each of these values are non-null, but we don't want to make the entire array itself required because it's possible that we don't have any pins within this array, and therefore we just want to return an empty array. Adding this second require is going to throw an error if that's the case. So we're going to add this get pins query. We won't pass any arguments to it. And we can head to our resolvers and within our query object add get pins it's going to take root args and context we won't need to add the authenticated higher order function to it because we won't need to read from context and we're going to use the pin model to await pin dot find and we'll pass in an empty filter this is going to allow us to get all of the pins in the pin documents in our pins collection and then we need to populate two fields the author field on each pin and we'll also call the populate method to populate comments.author and from this find operation we're going to get returned to us an array that's going to be put in this pins variable and we're going to return it. So before we take care of figuring out how to execute this get pins query on the client, we need to create a new piece of state within context.js where our pins array is going to be stored across our application. So we'll add a property called pins and that will be initially set to an empty array. And then to display these pins, to populate this pins array and display our pins on the page, we're going to head back to our map component. And first of all, in order to execute this query, we'll import use client from our client file in dot dot slash client. And now we need to create a query variable that will be put within our queries file, queries.js within GraphQL. So underneath our me query, we'll export const a new variable called get pins query. And to execute this query, we'll open up a set of curly braces, supply the name of the query, get pins. And for each pin, each pin object will get the ID created at title image, content, latitude, longitude, the author field populated with the author's ID, name, email, picture, and even though we don't have any comments now for each pin, we will add the comments field and request text created at and then the author subfield with ID, name, and picture. So now heading back to map.js, we'll import our get pins query. And that's going to come from dot dot slash graphql slash queries. So we want when our map component mounts to execute this query. So we'll add up at the top a use effect We'll make a separate use effect function, a use effect call. Note that we can separate use state and use effect calls according to what they do, so we have a better separation of concerns. So we can group the user position state as well as the get user position use effect here in the same area. And then within this use effect call, we can execute the function get pins, which we'll create, and get pins will be an async function where we can await client.request 
pass in our get pins query, and we'll get back from it our data object from which we can immediately destructure a property with the same name of the query function get pins. And for now, let's just console log get pins. So let's save all of these files. I want to pause this video very briefly to point out an error that I made here. I'm making this message from the future, and I want to tell you about a very common mistake to make when using useEffect, and it's a mistake that I just made, and that is not passing a second argument of an empty array to useEffect, where we're executing get pins. And this is very easy. It's very easy to make this mistake when you have a function that you want to execute on component mount and that updates state. So the problem is that if you don't tell useEffect that you only want this function to be run on component mount and therefore you don't provide that array, what's going to happen is that when the component mounts, this function is going to be run. And then since this function updates state, useEffect is going to be called every single time since useEffect runs on every re-render, on every state update. So you're going to run into an infinite loop. This isn't something that I caught in this video, but it's something I want you to know about and make sure that you don't make this mistake like I did. Always make sure, add the second argument of an empty array to use effect when you have and want to execute a function like get pins. And assuming we don't have any errors in our terminal, it looks like there's one well, I forgot to make the get pins function async. So once we change that, it looks like we're good. So we'll head back. And hopefully you caught that error as well. Remember that in order to use our client hook within map, we need to execute at the very top, use client and we get returned to us our created GraphQL client. Now when our map loads, if we take a look at the console, we see an object, the get pins object, which is actually an array containing each of the pins that we created. Now the next step is to display these pins on the page I'm actually going to first move up this use effect where we're executing get pins above both of our state values. And then within get pins itself, we need to dispatch a new action. So we'll dispatch an action with the type get underscore pins with a payload set to the get pins array. So now we need to add a new case to our reducer. Case get pins, where we will return an object, spread in our state, and update the pins array to our payload. And finally, to display these pins, we need to head back to map and head down beneath our draft pin and add an area for created pins where we can take state.pins and map over each of these elements. We'll map over each pin and return a marker. So let's just copy the marker that we have for the draft pin where first of all, since we're mapping over this marker, we need to add a key prop set to pin dot underscore ID. And instead of the latitude and longitude being from state dot draft, they'll instead be from pin, which results in pin dot latitude and pin dot longitude. And for now, I'm going to set the color of this pin, each of these created pins to dark blue. And we'll save our map and reducer files take a look at our map and we can see that our pins 
are now showing in the exact places that we created them. And finally, whenever we create a new pin, we want that pin to be immediately added to our map. So the way to do that will be to head to our create pin component, where we'll head down to handle submit, and we'll take the data that we're getting from create pin and provide it as the payload to a new action. So we'll dispatch an action with type create pin and the payload create pin. This will update the pins array in our global state. So we'll head to our reducer. We'll create a new case, create pin, and we'll begin by taking the payload and setting it to a variable new pin. And then we want to get all of the previous pins. And to make sure that this new pin, this payload, isn't one of these previous pins, we're going to filter our pins array. This will be particularly useful when we set up subscriptions. We'll take state.pins and filter by going through each pin element and making sure pin dot underscore ID is not equal to new pin dot underscore ID. So once we've got our new pins and our previous pins, we're going to return an object where we spread in our state and pins will be a new array into which we spread in all of the previous pins elements and add at the end of this new array, our new pin. So let's save everything and try adding a new pin. So let's set down a draft pin, add a title. As well as an image and some content. And then taking a look at that draft pin, when we hit submit, we should see that it's immediately added to our map.